What is up guys? Welcome to the Pottery Studio. I'm John the Potter. Great to have you here. Today we're talking about everything that has to do with glazes. Specifically glazed thickness, glaze consistency, specific gravity, how to mix glazes. Basically everything you need to know so you don't end up with giant drips and you end up with the results that you want. A long time ago, I did a video of how to measure your glaze thickness, not using specific gravity. So the unscientific way is what I said. The drip test, the stir test, the dry test, the eye test, and the feel test. And I basically had like the five ways that I do that. And that's usually what I do. I don't test my specific gravity all the time, but it's really good to be able to understand it. And if you are somebody that wants to get it exactly right, or you're having issues with your glaze, it is nice to be able to measure the specific gravity. When you're thinking about your glaze thickness, right? Basically you're talking about how much water you have in there versus how much glaze chemistry you have in there. So if you have your bag of dry mix, you add water to that. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is specific gravity. So what is specific gravity? The ratio of the density of a substance, typically a liquid or a solid, compared to the density of water. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what does that mean? So basically 100 milliliters equals 100 grams of water. Then we take the same amount of our glaze and we weigh that and then that's gonna give us a number which we will move the decimal point to make it so it's like somewhere at one point something, right? I'll show you what that means in a second. So if you're confused, don't worry, we're gonna go through everything. So on, I'm using Mako's glazes right now. Their recommendation for specific gravity is anywhere from 1.47 to 1.51. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Check out the scale. Our scale is set to grams. So right now it's at zero grams. So if I set this on here with no water in it, then it weighs 96 grams, but we're gonna reset it so that that's at zero. Fill this up to a hundred. Okay. And now we will weigh this. There we go. So I'm just proving to you that a hundred milliliters of water equals a hundred grams. We're gonna pull out a hundred, right at a hundred, right there. And then now we will weigh this. Okay, so we're at 144. So basically your specific gravity is then 1.44 for this glaze. So that's pretty close to what we wanna be. We're anywhere from 1.47 to 1.51 is the recommendation. So this would be a lower specific gravity, which means that it wouldn't be, it wouldn't go on quite as thick as if it was like 1.5 or 1.6 or something like that. If you don't have a fancy little thing like that, you can also just use something with a hundred milliliters right here. So you can weigh this, put your glaze up to there and then weigh how much that, and that would give you your specific gravity as well. So when, you're, when you mix your glazes up to the specific gravity that's recommended, then that's going to allow for a dip of one second. So that's kind of what Mako says on their glazes is they want, they want you to be able to dip it, let it sit there for one second, pull it out, and then that is a really good specific gravity. So keep in mind that if you are someone that likes to dip it slower, so say you dip something in there for a longer period of time, then you're gonna want to have it be a lower specific gravity, right? Because if you hold it in there for three, four, five seconds, then if it's at the specific gravity that you should be having for one second, then you're gonna get too much glaze on there and it might flake off, it might drip off, like some things that happen here. There's, there's a lot of things. It depends on how long you dip your pieces. It depends on the type of clay body. Uh, depends on the type of glaze. Some glazes are far drippier at that specific gravity. And so at the end of the day, you just really have to like continually test, 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 um, and not be afraid to add water or take water away. If it's a higher specific gravity and you're getting too much dripping where it's dripping off, well then you need to add more water to your glaze. And likewise, and the, on the other side of the spectrum, if your glazes aren't turning out like as vibrant or bright, or you're not getting as much dripping as you want, uh, then you need to add more glaze chemistry so that you get a higher specific, gra specific gravity. Now I will show you guys how to, how I start with a glaze. So if I have dry, five pounds of dry glaze, 
I start with two and a half quarts of water. So if you just followed the directions, I mean, that's exactly what I do. I just follow the directions right on the label is one pint to one pound. So if you have five pounds, then you need five pints of water, which is equal to two and a half quarts. So I start with two and a half quarts. You always wanna have a respirator on whenever you're mixing any dry glazes, right? So we'll put that on. So I'll cut the top off and then kind of get it as low in there as you can. You wanna minimize the amount of dust. And then they say to kind of like let it settle in or like absorb it. I don't know, usually I just start kind of mixing it up. And I've been doing this a really long time. And if you have been around glazes a long time, there's a lot of things you can do. Like I can just tell from stirring it that this is pretty thick. And I can tell from how it looks. Like if you go back to my old video about my five ways to kind of tell, like as I stir it, it comes to a stop really quickly, right? And it should, you know, if you, if it's less thick, then it will kind of spin around longer for like five, 10 seconds. So I'm gonna pull out right around a hundred, or I am gonna pull out a hundred, and then I weigh that. Oh, we're at 1.48 actually. So that is right around the specific gravity that we wanna be. So that's like perfect. We're right exactly in the range we wanna be. So we use two and a half quarts to five pounds water, and then we are good to go. Pro tip here, when you mix the glazes, I cut this out and tape it onto the outside of the bucket that I'm using so that you always wanna make sure obviously you know what glazes you're mixing, but then it also has your specific gravity information. It has the lot number. So if you have issues, you could contact the manufacturer and then tape that label right on there. A couple other tips. If your glaze is flaking off or like it dries and you can see it starting to crack, then you're either dipping it too long, like you're leaving the piece in the glaze for too long, or the specific gravity is too high and you should add water to your glaze. There's a ton, a ton of different factors. Like the clay is a factor. Like I use kind of two or three different kinds of clay. One is B clay from Continental Clay and one is Buff Stoneware. And all my glazes drip way more on the B clay because it's kind of like a porcelain, it's really smooth. And especially if I like, you can see this is the B clay right here. And I'm guessing if I would have done the same glaze application onto the Buff Stoneware, it would have not totally dripped off, but it did on this because it was the B clay. This, also the shape of this mug was, is one that really tends to drip a lot because it just goes straight down right there. Say you have like, like this type of shape on a piece, then it's actually going to drip and then there's like, it kind of comes out a little bit at the end, which will catch some of the glaze right there. So your clay is certainly a factor. And then also your firing, your firing temperature. A lot of Mako's glazes you can fire anywhere from cone five up to cone 10. And so obviously things are gonna drip a lot more at cone 10 than they are at cone five. If your kiln's really full, then it's gonna cool down slower, which means that it's gonna drip more. So that affects how much your glazes drip too. So you can do everything right in terms of having your specific gravity right, uh, your application right, um, but it, there's so many different variables in the process that it really comes down to testing. So if you apply glazes, and then you test them in your kiln and they turn out too drippy, then you know that you need to add water to your glaze or you need to apply a little bit less. And so that's why when you're first starting out and you're trying different things, it's always good to be really conservative with your application, right? So what I mean by conservative with your application is if you're gonna do a two different layers of glazes, you might do one layer on the whole thing and then you might just dip the top like a tiny little bit so that you can see how much it's gonna drip down. So that's what we did with these test, this test tile wall was great for this because you can see which glazes really dripped a lot and which ones didn't drip at all. So for example, you can see that on this one, this is Norse blue over coral sands and it's, it dripped like almost all the way to the bottom even though I know that we only dipped it halfway. So one's all the way and one's halfway. So whereas like this is bright red gloss over robin's eggs, so we dipped the whole thing in robin's egg and then we dipped the the whole, half of it in bright red gloss, and you can see there's a pretty straight line right across, so that didn't really drip at all. If you haven't seen my old video about the unscientific way, go check that out, because that's the way that you like learn in school if you like dip your finger in, how many drips come off makes a difference. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that over time, your glazes will lose water. So if you mix up your glaze and then you don't do anything for like six months and then you come back, then your specific gravity is going to be higher, which means that you need to add water to it so that you mix it up again and then you bring that specific gravity back into the range that you want it to be. Again, it all comes down to testing, like test, 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 test. I still, after doing this for a decade, have kiln loads that I get crazy drippage. And sometimes that's because I'm super aggressive with my glaze application, like I layer too many glazes on there. Say it's like three different glazes, that's what this is, is three different glazes layered on top and they drip down. Uh, or sometimes it's because I, my glazes are changing because say I leave the glazes uncovered for a couple days, some of the water evaporates out and I don't replace that water and so then all of a sudden my glaze specific gravity is too high and I don't know it, I apply a bunch and then it drips off. Uh, or it's a really packed kiln, I'll do like a slow cool, which means that it's dropping the temperature and then holding it. So there's like so many different variables, so you have to test out what it is. So when you're first starting out, I'd say, start with a little less glaze than you think necessary or than you did last time uh, so that you can see how much it's gonna drip um, if it's flaking off or it's cracking, then that's definitely too thick or you're dipping it too long. Make sure you're just dipping for like one second at a time. Um, anyway, I hope this helps. Please comment below with any other thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. I will make up a follow-up video. Uh, I have lots of different vi videos on this channel about the way that I've done glazing in the past, uh, but it really does come with experience and time and I know that when you're first starting out, you wanna make sure you're not wasting glazes or you're not wasting your pieces that you've made that you love. That is part of pottery and part of understanding uh, just how it works. So hopefully these tips and tricks helped you. Uh, we have two more online sales coming up this year. If you wanna check them out, they are Black Friday and December 12th before Christmas. Otherwise, uh, we are getting ready for 2022. So. Thank you guys so much for joining. Hope you are doing great. And if you would mind subscribing, liking, sharing, all the things, we'll see you guys in the next video.